In the backyard, your tree branch was Excalibur. The trash can lid, your shield. Back then, you had everything you needed to defeat those big, scary giants. So what changed? New giants overshadow us now. We're always anxious about everything. We can't let go of what that person did to us. We don't measure up to everyone around us. Will we turn and run? Or will we stand and fight? Because freedom is on the other side of victory. It's time for slaying giants. Again, starting and finishing, excuse me, a, a message series that we've been in. This is week five of this five-part series that we've entitled Slain Giants. And there's no doubt about it that with the COVID-19 crisis that is hitting our nation, people are experiencing fear at ramped up levels. I've talked to so many people that they are fearful about the future. People are fearful about uh, our, our country. People are fearful about contracting the COVID-19 virus. I've got other people that are, that are fearful about their families. And, and it's leading us down this path of worry and stress, anxiety, panic, and fear. So in this series, we've been slaying the different giants of fear that are trying to control our lives and so in week one, we took on the fear of rejection. In week two, we took on the fear of intimacy. On week three, it was a fantastic Sunday as we took on the fear of losing control. Last week, we talked about how to have peace when all hell breaks loose in your life. And today, by the power of the Spirit of God and through the Word of God, we are going to slay the giant of failure. And so let's go to the theme verse that we have for this series. It's become the theme verse for so many in our nation right now. And it says this in 2 Timothy, that God, my friends, has not given you a spirit of what? Come on, everybody. Of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And I want to make you a promise today, Life Fellowship. And that's this. I believe that it is not accidental that God has brought us together for this moment. Because I believe that you're going to hear something from God, maybe in a way that you've never, ever heard it before. And while that's happening, at the same time as God is stirring up your faith on the inside to do some massively cool things for Him, I can promise you this, that your enemy, the evil one, Satan himself, is going to try to talk you out of trying. And he's going to try to leverage against you your, one of your greatest fears. And it's the fear of failure. In fact, the reason why he wants to leverage this against you is because of this. Check it out. Everybody fears failure. Everyone. But hey, everyone, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And today in this message, I want to actually show you how much the fear of failure can actually cost you. It's going to cost you more than you ever realized. In fact, Jesus one day told a parable. And he told this story that really helps illustrate how much the fear of failure will actually cost you. And so we talked about this business owner, this master, that he had to take a long journey. <laughs> and obviously, he was not sheltering in home. <laughs> there was no coronavirus epidemic in that time. Thank God. Hashtag uh, flatten the curve. But, but he had to take this long journey, and so he, he brought some of his associates into his office, and he said, hey guys, to you I'm going to give you five talents, and to you I'm going to give you two talents, and to another guy he gave him one talent. He said, while I'm gone, take care of the business. And so the, the first two guys, they took their talents and they invested them, they took risks, and they took the original principle and they doubled it. But the third guy, he had the fear of failure. And he did what so many of us are prone to do, and that is that he was paralyzed by his fear. And instead of taking risks and instead of stepping out, he had this scarcity mentality. He, he buried his talents. He was paralyzed by fear. 
And this is where the story picks up. Jesus is telling this. It's Matthew chapter 25. And by the way, if you'd like to, you can follow along in your message notes that are available on your Life Fellowship app. It says, Then the man who had received one talent came and said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man. So I was, look at this, afraid. He had the spirit of failure, the fear of failure. He said, I I knew I was going to disappoint you. I I I was afraid that I wasn't going to going to do exactly what you wanted. And so I actually went out and I I hid your talent in the ground. And I want you to see this. The guy is speaking to his business, his, 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 his master in such a way where he's almost puffing out his chest saying, hey, I did something good. And it goes on, see, here's what belongs to you. Now, if you didn't know what the rest of the story stated, you might imagine that this business owner would have looked back at this guy and said, Man, I am so glad that you played it safe. I'm glad that you buried your talent in the sand. I'm glad that you protected it. But in fact, it says the exact opposite of it. Look at this. His master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. The fear of failure will paralyze you. In fact, are you ready for this? The fear of failure will cost you everything that you have. In fact, I'm, I'm reminded of a story of, of a guy that happened to own a, a, a bunch of monkeys. And, and anybody that owns a bunch of monkeys is likely to do some very unusual things. And so one day, he, he put four monkeys in a room, and in the middle of the room, he placed a big stalk. And on the top of that stalk, he had a bushel of all kinds of bananas. And one of the little monkeys, he, he kind of shut the door and watched this experiment play out in front of him. And so one of the little monkeys, man, he saw those bananas at, top, at the top of that, that stalk, and he's like, oh, 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 and, he, and he starts trying to climb up the stalk. And about halfway up, that owner, he takes a water gun, and he shoots him with a cold blast of, of water. And that monkey comes coming back down as quick as he can, like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think about that? Not, not too bad. Hey, everybody, where else do you get preaching like that, huh? <laughs> Hopefully nowhere else. And all God's people said amen. But, but, but this little monkey came, came down, and, and so another monkey decided, well, I'm, I'm going to try. And about the time he got halfway up the stalk, he got blasted by a shot of cold water and came back down. They attempted this numerous times until they just decided that the cost wasn't worth trying to get those bananas. Well, the owner thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something else in this experiment. So he took an outside monkey and replaced one of the original monkeys. And when this new monkey got into that room, he started trying to climb the stalk. And instantly, the three other original monkeys grabbed his feet and pulled him back down. And this happened again and again until that new monkey stopped trying. Well, over the course of the next few days, this owner replaced all four original monkeys with all four new monkeys that did not know the rules. And none of the monkeys tried to get the bananas. None of the monkeys realized why they were fearful to climb the stalk. And I think that happens so oftentimes in our lives. Because God gives us a dream. He does something on the inside of us. And and, and oftentimes there's somebody... And unfortunately, oftentimes it's somebody that we love. And they come to us and they say, it's never going to work. In fact, (laughs) they encourage us with words like, you're a failure. This is not going to happen. I've already tried this. It's not going to work for you. You're just wasting your time. But hey, everybody, here's what I want you to see today. Don't let someone else's failure or someone else's fear make a monkey out of you. Don't let it happen. Listen, hey everybody, we, 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 we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Everybody fails, but God's not giving you that spirit of fear. And so today in this message, I want to take the Word of God and I want to slay this giant of fear once and forever and for all. I, I, I want to take it and I want to annihilate it where it's no longer a part of our lives. Because for so many of us, we are consumed by this failure. And it's getting into all aspects of our lives. 
And so maybe you're here today and you're listening to this and, and, and all of a sudden there are things that have been taking place in the culture all around. And listen, God has spoken to you. You, you know what He has shared with you about the dreams that are on the inside of you. But maybe, maybe it's for your business. Maybe it's to take new ground. Maybe it's to do something, uh, to, to write a book. But because of what's happening with the COVID-19 effect crisis happening in America right now, you've, you've shrunk back. And you find yourself hesitating. Maybe, maybe you are the kind of person that because of what is happening with, with, with the COVID-19 effect, you're thinking to yourself, I am never going to be a success. And you find yourself battling the fear of failure. Maybe you have battled with the fear of being able to provide for your family. And you've thought, how, how am I going to pay the mortgage? And how am I going to put food on the, on the table? And you found yourself being paralyzed by this fear of failure. And it's leading you down a road of worry, anxiety, stress. Maybe you are watching and you've been paralyzed by this fear. The fear of failing as a parent. So not only are you officing out of home, but now you are cooped up and having to become a homeschool teacher right there in the house. And you're thinking, there's a, there's a strong possibility I am going to fail as a, as a parent. Or maybe God has spoken to you about being generous with the things of God and giving into the work of God, honoring Him with the tithe, the first 10%, returning it to the house of the Lord your God. Because of everything that's going on, you're thinking, well, am I going to actually be able to provide for myself? See, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. You know, this whole concept of the fear of failure is something that has haunted me my entire life. In fact, uh, my dad, when, I, when he was growing up, he was an incredible athlete. He was the, the captain of his golf team, caddied in the U.S. Open, played uh, league hockey. He was the star of his basketball team in high school. And so here I was growing up, and we played a lot of sports because of that. And, and, and what I noticed, and what's so funny is that any time that dad wasn't there at the games... I did really good. But whenever he showed up, I would hesitate. I would second guess myself. I, I, would, I would think about how I was going to fail, and oftentimes I did. And in fact, that failure followed me all the way into my adult years. In fact, even when I began pastoring this church for the first year, I mean, I, I hesitated on everything, every decision. Because I thought, are people going to like me? How are they going to respond to this? Are we going to pay the, be able to pay the church's bills? Am I going to be able to put food on my plate? Is the church going to fail? And I, and I struggled. I was paralyzed by the fear of failure. And many that are watching me today, because of what's happening in our culture today with the COVID-19 pandemic, you are being paralyzed by fear. But God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind, everybody. So come on, let's slay these, this giant of the fear of failure. And I want to give you three keys today. And, and I, I hope this first one is very encouraging to you. And that's this. Number one, you're going to fail. Aren't you glad you came to church today, huh? <laughs> like, you're going to fail. In fact, we just need to embrace that. So unless you're Jesus, or unless you never try anything, you're going to fail. We need to embrace that failure is a part of the process of the journey towards success. In fact, look what James said in James chapter 3. He said, man, we all stumble. All of us. We, we all fail. You and me alike. In men... <laughs> Not just a few, but in many ways. And if anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect person. And that's none of us. Hey, everybody, you're going to fail. And we need to embrace the reality that it's part of the journey down the road to success. In fact, let me give you kind of a snapshot, a, a, a chapter out of the book of Tatum and I's life that kind of highlights one of the moments that I, I, I failed, in, and, I, and I'll just tell you it, 
So it was back in 2001 that Tatum and I, we moved to Dallas, Texas. We came here to be the youth pastors at a church, and we were living in the Parsonage, which is the home that is right next to the church. And we just loved it because it had three bedrooms and a bathroom. It was built in like 1950. In fact, I brought a picture with me today of Tatum and I back in, the, in that day and age there. Look at this. There, there's Tatum and I and, and Blakely, and I love these two girls right here. And so we're living at this parsonage, and uh, we, we just thought it was the best thing in the world because we had moved from government-assisted housing there in the apartment in Des Moines, and now we actually have a house, and, and, and we absolutely loved it. So it was a night in February, mid-February, a Wednesday night. I had got done preaching at the youth service. I had preached my heart out. I mean, we saw all kinds of teenagers come home to Jesus And at the end of the night, I locked up the church and I was walking home. I was exhausted. I was so tired. And I get into the house and and it was late that night, so I crawled into bed with Tatum and, and we're trying to fall asleep. And all of a sudden, we start hearing these footsteps up in the attic. Well, Tatum looked over at me. She said, Chris, there's somebody up that's in the attic. And I said, honey, there's nobody in the attic. It's just, it's an old house. It's just the wind. But for the next hour, we heard, for the next hour, we, we heard all of the, the, the sounds of footsteps there in the attic. And we were thinking, oh my goodness, what, what's going on? So Tatum looked at me and she said, hey Chris, she said, go up there and see, there's somebody that's in the attic. And so her young, strapping, handsome, strong, handsome husband of a man <laughs> rolled out of bed. Mm-hmm. I rolled out of bed with nothing but my pajamas on and a flashlight, and I crawled up into the attic. It was pitch black, freezing cold, and I carefully and quietly began to balance on each one of those two-by-four rafters, and then it happened. I saw her. It was a big, nesting mama raccoon, and when she saw me, she made the loudest shriek that you've ever heard. And then her teeth began to snarl, and she came running straight at me. And it was at that moment that time seemed to slow down. I mean, here I am. I am the man. But in that moment, I was screaming like a little grade school girl. And there was Tatum in the bedroom down below looking up at the ceiling saying, Chris, get him, get him, get him. The the time slowed down. I thought that I was about to die. I actually, I actually had my life flash before me. I thought my kids are going to wake up tomorrow morning without their daddy. I actually saw my obituary before me. Chris Lindbergh bravely battles the, the nesting mama raccoon and dies protecting his family. <laughs> he will be sorely missed. So I'm fast. I'm fast, everybody. But I'm incredibly fast in moments like that, because I know that I've got to protect myself so that my kids can have a daddy growing on up. And so I thought to myself, I said, if I can move fast, fast, faster than fast, faster than lightning, faster than electricity, I can bound myself over these rafters, make it down the attic hole, and be fine and safe. And so like a skilled ninja, I turned, and that's the last thing I remember, I had this pain shoot from the bottom of my foot, and it went all the way straight to my brain. And about that time, I, I, I felt the most incredible rush of sweat fill my, fill my body. I had stepped barefoot on a roofing nail. Yeah, a roofing nail. And when that pain went from my foot all the way up to my brain, there was a bad word that began to form in the back of my brain. And when that pain hit my brain, hit that word, it pushed it from my brain out into my mouth, and it came out with more force than you can ever imagine. And it didn't just come out with force. It came out loud and long, to which I know what some of you are thinking. You're wondering, what was the word? Was it it on the lower end of the bad words to say? And I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to tell you. In fact, uh, it it was probably on the higher end of what you would consider some of the worst words that you can actually say. And so, I want you to picture this. There's Tatum in the bedroom looking up at the ceiling. 
And there is her pastor husband up in the attic screaming the mother of all curse words, knowing that this is the very last word that he is going to say before he dies and stands face to face before Jesus. (laughs) Knowing that this is the very last word that he said when she is at the funeral looking at him in the casket. And so finally, I, I stepped up off the nail. That raccoon ran by me. And there was silence. Tatum yelled up. She said, are you alive? I said, I wish I was dead. I wish I was dead. And it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. And after it was all done, you know, I I really started thinking about how is it that this same mouth that just a few short hours before this could speak such life into so many teenagers and seeing them come home to Jesus And yet, just a few short hours later, that same mouth be used in such a way that did not please God whatsoever. In fact, the next day, I I walked around with this failure mindset. I, I remember having this thought in the back of my head the next day. You're a loser. You're a disappointment to God. How dare you even call yourself a pastor? You are a failure. And here's what I need us all to understand today. Please write this down. Just because you fail at something doesn't mean that you're a failure. So just because you fail financially doesn't mean that you're a failure. Just because you fail at a relationship and it goes sour doesn't mean that you are a failure. I love what Zig Ziglar said. He said, failure is an event, never a person. Failure is an event, never a person. And sometimes God allows failure to visit our lives because it's only through failure that He can actually do the very thing that He wants to see accomplished in your life. In fact, I love the story of of Peter. Uh, Peter was an incredible man. In fact, what was Peter known for? Come on, he was known for being one of the great disciples, apostles. I mean, he had one of the biggest ministries. But what else was Peter known for? He was known for making some of the biggest mistakes, the biggest failures. So, so Peter had, had, had one of the biggest ministries, but he's the guy that also had the biggest failures. And why did Jesus let this happen? Well, it's because Peter was so caught up in himself. He was so cocky. Remember, he's the guy that said, Lord, everybody else can deny you, but not me. I will never deny you. And you all know how the story plays out. Satan came to Jesus and said, hey, can I have a a shot at Peter? Jesus looked back at him and said, yeah, take take your best shot. And then Jesus says something so interesting to Peter in, in Luke chapter 22. Check this out. And the Lord said, hey, Peter, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. And you all know the story. This is when Peter denied Jesus three times. But it goes on, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. In other words, you're going to fail. Every one of us are going to fail, but just because you fail, don't let your faith fail. You you will fail in life. You will fail at moments in your walk with Christianity, with God, but don't let your faith fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. You say, what was Jesus doing here? He was loving Peter in the midst of his failure. In fact, I believe that what Peter saw as his greatest setback, God was seen as his greatest set up. In fact, I I may say it like this, God first did something in Peter before he did something through Peter. So even in the midst of that temporary failure, God was using Peter to do massive things. In fact, it was on the day of Pentecost that God used Peter to see 3,000 people come home to God and birth the New Testament church in one day. One day. Check this out. Just because you fail at something does not mean that you're a failure. Because we all fail. And it's time that we just embrace the fact that failure is a part of the journey down the road to success. In fact, there's, there's people that look at the perceived success that I have. They say, oh, you've got success in ministry and in family and in, in, in areas of your finances. And what people don't realize is that behind every one of those perceived per- successes, 
there are massive, multiple failures. Because, hey, everybody, I fail, you fail. We all do. In fact, let me show you a beautiful verse that will encourage you today. It says this in Romans. We can rejoice, too, when we run into what? Come on, everybody. When we run into problems and trials. When you hit the wall. When you fail. When it just doesn't seem like it's working out for you. Why can we rejoice, Paul? Well, we know that they're actually good for us. Well, Paul, don't feel like it's good for us. Yeah, they're actually good for you. Because it's part of the journey down the road to success that God has for you. They actually help us to learn to endure. They're actually creating this grit on the inside. Hey, everybody, we all fail. We all fail. Here's the second truth, and I hope this one is more encouraging to you today, and that's this. Number two, you can overcome. Like you can overcome by, by the power of the Spirit of God and the word of your testimony and what Jesus did on the cross, you can overcome. In fact, I love this verse in Proverbs. It says this, for though a righteous man falls, how many times? Seven times. Yet he does what? He rises again. Hey, everybody, if you stumble, what do we do? We rise up again. Hey, everybody, if you fall down, what do we do? We rise up again. If you get knocked down, what do we do? We rise up again. We don't stay down. We get up. We see what God wants to do in our lives. No matter how many times we fail, we get back up. There are so many people that right now in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic that have faltered and failed. Hey, everybody, don't stay down. Get back up. When our nation is going through what it's going through and our communities are reeling from this, we don't stay down. We get back up. In fact, let me encourage you with this. This man right here, Walt Disney, you need to know that he was actually fired by the newspaper editor that he began working for for having no creative ideas. He went bankrupt seven times before he was able to build Walt Disney World. Michael Jordan, many consider to be one of the greatest basketball players of all times. And do you know that he didn't even make the cut for his sophomore high school basketball team? Beethoven was named by his teacher a hopeless composer. Winston Churchill, he failed the sixth grade. And it wasn't even until he was 62 that he became prime minister of England. Henry Ford failed and went bankrupt five times before he ever became a success. Hey, everybody, look in my eyes. I need you to hear this today. We are not falling down. Failure is not falling down. It's falling down and not getting back up again. We all stumble. But when we stumble, what do we do? We get back up. Up. Come on, everybody. If you faltered in this last week because of things and pressure and stress happening in your home, we get back up. Come on, buck up under it, little buckaroo. Come on, Christian warrior, soldier, you. Let's do something for God. Failure's not falling down. It's falling down and not getting back up. In fact, let me say it like this. Can, can somebody give me an amen right now? Come on. Failure is the price that we pay on the road to God's success. I love what Paul said in Galatians. He said, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, and everybody, God knows the proper time, and it's not in our time, it's in his time. And some of us, we want God to work and move and do things in the moments that we deem necessary for us, but God seems, sees a bigger plan at play. And in the right time, in the proper time, God's going to step in. And you're going to reap a harvest if we don't give up. Come on, everyone. When you fall, when you fall, stumble, when you get knocked down, what do we do? We don't stay down. We get back up. Listen, it doesn't matter what happens to you. What matters is what happens in you. And some of you, God is doing something to you. Because he's getting prepared to do something through you in massive ways. Which brings me to the last encouragement. Not only do you need to know that, we, that you're going to fail, not only do you need to know, number two, that you can overcome, but number three, you're going to have to take faith risks. Because without a faith, faith risk, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, and without faith, it's in what? Impossible possible to please God. 
It's impossible. And some of us have been in, uh, in, in our comfort zones for t- far too long, and it's time for us to step out into the fields of faith because it is impossible. It is inconceivable. It's not even remote. It, it's impossible to please your God without faith. See, check this out. You can't play it safe and please God, and you can't bury your talent and please God. See, I love the story of Peter. Peter walking on the water. And, and I've, I've heard so many people just kind of lamb blast Peter and tell him that he's such a failure. In fact, if you don't know the story, one night Jesus was, was walking on the water as the disciples were out in the Sea of Galilee. And he came walking out to them and he called out to them. He said, hey boys, any of you all want to come water walk with me? And Peter said, hey, I'll do it. And he stepped out of the boat and he began to take some steps on the water. He lost his focus of God, took his eyes off of Jesus and then began to sink. And a lot of pastors have just said, Peter, you're such a failure. You're the, you're the failure for, for sinking. And I look at it, I say, no, Peter's not the failure. It's all the 11 that stayed in the boat. That's the failure. Peter's the one that got out and water walked. He stepped out of his comfort zone and he was used by God. He got to experience the rush of allowing God of the universe to flow through him in massive ways. Because, hey, everybody, it's impossible to please God staying in your comfort zone. You have to take a faith risk. See, for me, one of my greatest fears that I've ever had is the fear of failure. There's so many of us here that you, your greatest fear is failure. And if you allow that fear to dominate your life, it's going to take you down a road. It's going to cost you more than you ever realized because your greatest fear will always produce your greatest pain. And your greatest pain will be regret. See, I don't want you to get to the end of your life and you look back and see the moments that you could have, you should have, you would have, but you never did because you were scared. See, the the greatest regret at the end of our lives will not be the regret of action. It'll be the regret of inaction. So when, when, when my kids were really small, Tatum and I had taken them to one of those fast food restaurants that have one of those little indoor playscape areas. And so we were letting the kids play and and I had gotten up from my table to, to go check on my boy Nash. And, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my daughter Blakely, I mean, she was up fairly high in that thing. She had found a way to kind of sneak past the safety contraptions that they have at those playscape areas. And she launched out like a, like a little spider girl, launching through the air. I mean, I barely caught her, spun her around. I saved her life. I mean, I picked up her shirt and gave her the biggest zebert right there on her belly. She's giggling. I said, sweetie, I said, why in the world did you do that? She said, she, she was giggling. She smiled. She says, because I knew you'd catch me, daddy. I knew you'd catch me. There's some of us that the fear of failure has kept you locked in a prison. It's taking you down a pathway that has cost you more than you ever will realize and today it's time to realize that we all we all fear failure number two we're all going to fail we're all going to fail but just because you fail don't let your faith fail number 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 next you need to know that you can rise up you don't have to be defeated by that thing listen it's true it might have knocked you down but failure is not falling down it's falling down and not getting back up again Number three, you're going to have to realize that it's time. It's time. Hey, look at my eyes. It's time. It's time that you begin to take those steps of faith. You see, it's in moments like this, when everything gets shaken up in culture, that new millionaires are made. It's in moments like this that people begin to take new ground, new market share, because it's all different. It's all different. And when in the right season and the right time, God's going to speak to your heart. And don't let the fear of failure keep you holding back. No, no, you run full heart into what God has for you. Because God's blessing is on your life. So come on, right there in your home, if you would, let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person that is 
listening to this message today, to the one that has struggled with the fear of failure, panic, anxiety has paralyzed them. Lord, right now, we just place this in your hands. We pray, God, for the parent that feels like they're a failure right now. I, I pray for the, the married couple that feels like they're failing right now. I, I pray, God, for the business owner that feels like they're failing right now. I, I pray for that individual that feels like they're failing in their, in their walk with God. I, I, I pray, God, right now that you would give us fresh courage to rise back up again. To take a step of faith and step into the dream that you have for our lives. Because, Lord, we know that you got all this in your hands. We put our trust in you. And so bless your people, I pray, in Jesus' name. And if you're listening today, you've tuned in, and you're away from God, can I remind you that God's not mad at you? In fact, he's madly in love with you. See, before you were ever born, God made the ultimate sacrifice and sent his one and only son to the cross to die for you. Do you know how valuable you are? You're, you're worth the price of God's very own son. Right? If you will just stop and turn around, just, just surrender your life to him. And I can't think of a better time than right now in the midst of everything that we're going through. Listen, Jesus is coming back soon. And it's time that we surrender our lives and our everything. And so right where you're at, if you'd, you'd pray this prayer with me, just, just pray this. Just say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my, my hurts, my hopes, my sin, my failure. I put it all in your hands, and I just pray right now that you would absolutely change me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. And I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And all God's people, come on, said, amen. Amen.